Uh, so, um, <laughs> thank you for uh, being here at uh, 10. How many of you made the party? Oh, it was a party? Party? I drank a lot. Not officially. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we kind of took it up a notch there. With the, wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> this morning we have uh, Datagram with a bunch of a lot clicking and key bumping. Um, I saw one of those. Oh, hey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, you want to make a throw hammer? <laughs> 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 yeah, man. Oh, Come on, I got that. And, uh, and uh, that guy right there. Hey. Hey, can I throw a rock? You're four. He four, though. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so, uh, right right again, please. I'm hoping for a hammer. Hi, G. Uh, all right. Is this fine? Okay. Uh, so this is an introduction to lock picking and key bumping. Uh, yours truly is Datagram. And uh, everybody ready? Oh, such enthusiasm. Woot. All right. So uh, about me, I, I'm a mild mannered sysadmin. I program in a, a lot of languages, but those are all the ones I deemed worthy of putting on the slide. Uh, I enjoy long walks on the beach. Uh, uh, I'm a, uh, a, a, a computer security enthusiast, because uh, we're politically correct here. And uh, I, I'm also into lock picking, but I am not a, a bona fide locksmith because I am uh, poor. Uh, so I can't take the $900 six month course yet. So uh, moving right on. So, well, yes, I do. And I'm also raising for a key machine fund. Uh, so, uh, so first off, we're going to do lock picking. Uh, key bumping will be the second half of the talk. Uh, and to know how to pick the lock, of course, you need to know how the lock works internally, uh, how keys work to normally open a lock. Uh, and then we'll get into picking and even all sorts of different types of locks. Uh, so how locks work. And so that'll be the front of the lock. And I actually have this lock here with me. Where's the X? can't see it very well on that, but uh, that's how it looks to you from the outside. Uh, and most people know this, uh, but they don't know how locks work internally. Uh, and on the left, you have how it looks to us. And on the right is how it looks internally. And uh, inside of it, there's two pins. Uh, and there's obviously more than just two pins. They're arranged in a fashion such as, where are you? Such as this. So there's several of them. Okay. Can you see that? You have to take the light and put it right next to you. I can do that. Yeah. So there's several holes. Um, and there are stacks of pins with this spring on top, pushing them down. Uh, okay, moving on. So the lock works that when you don't have a correct key inserted or other bypass methods, uh, you'll turn it and the top pin will force the uh, cylinder to not be able to rotate because it's blocking the path. And so that's another high resolution photo care, care of Strom Carlson of uh, a cutaway lock. So you can see the springs and the top pins. Uh, don't mind the, the marker. That's for my own purposes. <laughs> Uh, and there, I, I put a pick all the way through it so you could see um, how both pins. Um, but we were not expedient enough to get the eye resolution photo of that one. Uh, yet. Uh, all right, so here's how keys work. Uh, on the left, you see the, the lock with, without anything inserted. And that's how it's, it's normally uh, all the pins are set. So all of those blue pins would be blocking the uh, cylinder from turning. Uh, on the right, you have the key. And what the key acts to do is raise all those to um, this line right here is known as the shear line. And when all those pin pairs are there, the, the plug can freely rotate so that, uh, and then it'll engage whatever locking mechanism to open the lock or lock the lock. Is everyone clear on this? All right, pretty simple. So this is how the key works. It'll raise the pin pair, uh, again, not just this one, but all of them, to the, the right, right height and then rotate it. 
Um, note that there's a small gap between the two pins. Um, that's so that the, it can freely rotate without having to have extremely, extremely, extremely precise keys. Um, so you have a, a small bit of leeway, and this comes in handy when you're picking. So picking a lock. Um, normally with a key, uh, you're applying torque when you turn the key. And at that point, all the pins are raised to the right position. Uh, picking it's not as easy. Uh, first, you have to use a small tool called a torque wrench to apply torque. And one of these picks. And you, what you want to do is you want to apply torque and find what's known as the binding pin, and we'll get into that in a second. And we'll raise all the pin pairs to the shear line, and then the plug will rotate. So setting a pin. Uh, this is what it looks like when you're picking it. Note that the, the torque's applied first so that uh, friction's caused between the, the rotation of the plug and the, um, the blue pin uh, so that when you raise it to the correct level, the, the cylinder will rotate and capture the top pin above it instead of just letting it fall back down. Is that everyone clear? Oh, and uh, feel free to ask questions uh, at, at any time. Just shout shit out. It's fine. What's up? So, um, like in the position where the pin is like all the way down, what causes it to like stay with the pin on the top of the pin? Um, and not just like fall down and like make uh, Well, the spring is pushing the, the top pin down. Yeah, what, what keeps the bottom pin from like not falling down? Well, in this situation, you'd be pushing it up with the pick. No, what, no there's like what what keeps the red if there's no key there, there, yeah, what keeps the red pin on the bottom? Uh, no, it'll fall back down once you set the pin. Oh, okay. That, that's so actually... Yeah. Um, if once you do this, then that pin will fall back down to its original position. Maybe you mean what keeps it from falling through entirely? Oh well, the the way the cylinder is designed, it, it it hooks it in. It doesn't. It's not a straight through hole. Yeah. It has like a little dip at the end, so it holds it in. Uh, okay. So like I said, pin binding. Um, you'd think that the cylinders in uh, in or the the chambers in the plug would be drilled straight. So that when you wrote, when you put torque on it, it had hit all of those at once. Uh, the rotation of, of this, the rotation of this would hit all those pins at once, the pin pairs. Uh, but that's not true because we are not that perfect. And uh, what ends up happening is that they're all slightly off by uh, measures of distance. I, I can't even begin to describe because I don't have the intelligence to. Uh, so what happens is that when they're all slightly off, uh, one pair of pins will hit. The, rot the rotating uh, plate before anything else, uh, and that'll cause uh, what's known as binding, and that's friction between it. And um, so, in, in this example here, uh, assume that we're rotating counterclockwise. It'd hit this top pin first because that would be the most to the left, and that'd cause friction. And you'd know that that pin is binding because of that added friction when you're pushing the pin pairs up. Uh, normally, they'd be very loose if you're not applying any torque at all. But when you do this and that pin binds, it has added, um, added pressure on it when you're pushing it up. And that'll be demonstrated more in the examples later. Um, and so the, the point of this is that there's no order to set a lock um, unless you specifically <laughs> drill the chambers how you want. Uh, in this example, if they were drilled from left to right, then you'd pick, assuming you're turning clockwise, you'd pick the lock from back to front and vice versa for the opposite situation. Does that make sense? All right. So picking a lock, you, like I said, the three steps. Insert your torque wrench. Put very minimal torque. Uh, the beginner mistake is to put excessive torque. Uh, you, you really could use feather touches for a number of locks. Uh, and we'll get into that later. And in this example, you'll note that, wait for it to reset. Uh, you'll note that the binding pin will visually have more force applied to it as, as the, the locksmith or, or deviant, as we'll say. Uh, these pins all have no torque, or no binding on it, but that one did. And notice how it was harder to push up. Does that make sense? OK, uh, we'll do a demonstration. So how many of you have these or have seen these? <laughs> uh, this is a standard master lock. Uh, demonstration effect. Uh, seriously, though. <sighs> there. Open. 
Uh, and it, it, it also works for gun locks. <laughs> but I'll need a different pick. Uh, you sh it should be noted that gun locks are made for child safety, not for protection of your guns, uh, for good reason. Which is, the wrong one. is this so easy a three-year-old could do it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and what's scarier is that bumping is actually even easier. Is this even open already? No. All right. Well, I don't want to waste too much time doing that. Um... Yeah, I have a whole lot of locks on the table, but, well, I have another master lock I could pick. I like master locks because they don't uh, produce a demonstration effect all too often. Most open on their own. Um, and it should be noted that all the different master locks on this table I could pick, uh, even this bad boy, but this one just takes me about a minute longer. Uh, I just can't afford to waste that much time, so moving right along. So high security locks. These have all been very simple. Uh, you'd think it's extremely easy to pick all the locks in your building, and it might be. Um, but most quote-unquote high security locks offer uh, one or more of the one or more of these uh, security features. Um, they'll have a, a very restrictive keyway so that. Uh, only specialized keys can go in, and it'll make it a lot harder for me to insert my pick in there because all that stuff uh, added with the fact that I need to insert the torque wrench somewhere. Uh, you don't have a whole lot of room to move in some QAs. And uh, security pins. Uh, in our examples, all the top pins and the bottom pins have been normal looking. They've just been rectangular, but of course cylindrical. Um, but they have uh, specialized designs on them that'll help so that when uh, when something, uh, when I set a pin and something else binds, that'll get stuck. Uh, and there's a lot of different ways that they could do that. There's also something called the side pin, which is, um, well, why don't we just go through these and then you could see as I explain them. Uh, so restrictive keyways. There's an example. And that's our, fr <laughs> that's our friend uh, from whichever Star Wars movie. I don't know, I'm not a Star Wars guy, but that's what it reminded me of. Uh, and he's actually here in person today. So... Uh, as you can see, very scary, um, very hard to pick, uh, very hard to, yeah, very hard to pick. Uh, the best locks like that actually have a lot more security features than just that, but that's, uh, that's very prominent to me. Uh, so moving on, like I said, uh, different types of top pins will um, be used to catch the pin. Uh, and on the left, you could see how it would be normally, and on the right would be when it's picked. Uh, remember, if you have the key, everything's raised before it's rotated, so this is not a problem. Uh, so what happens here is somebody applies torque, but they apply too much torque. So it'll move that over, and when he tries to push that pin up, it'll hit the, the right side of, of the lock and not be able to go up and free itself from the shear line. And they have all sorts of other designs. Uh, there's a spool pin. works in the same way. Uh, and here's my personal favorite, serrated pins. Um, and if you remember, in our, in our uh, very first lock, this one has bottom serrated pins. And you can see them pretty clearly right there, I hope. Is that uh, visible? Yeah. All right, good. Um, so yeah. And they all work in essentially the same way. Uh, and people ask me, is it still possible to pick locks with security pins? Yes, you just have to have uh, a lot more finesse. Like, you can't just jam things in there. Uh, you have to be more careful. And uh, we have a lock box that I'll be putting up after the talk that'll have uh, the hardest lock I put up there has all security pins for top pins. Uh, so if you pick it, come talk to me. Uh, and I also made one that has uh, three pins and one security pin so that you could feel when that pin catches uh, and you know kind of adjust yourself to be able to pick it easily. Uh, so and then side pins. Um, so here's our cylinder and that little metallic silver thing right here. Uh, is sticking out. So normally the plug would not be able to turn because that would be hitting something inside the lock. Um, and the way that this is works with the, with the real key is that the key looks like that. It has that small thing right here, and that pin would <laughs> fall into it when the correct key is inserted, and it'd be free to rotate, assuming. Is the slage, uh, or the this is the uh, slage Everest, actually. Um, but there's a problem with this specific thing, is uh, people figured well, hey, why don't we just do this? 
and cut that out. And not only that, but this doubles as a, uh, a torque wrench, yeah, a tension wrench. So then all they have to do is that, <laughs> and then go, go through and pick all the, the normal pin pairs. Uh, but then there's an improvement on this called sidebars. Uh, and what that is, is it's the same kind of idea as a, a side pin, but there's several of them. And you can see in the key it has two, two ridges that have cuts. So the, uh, the bottom ridge would activate the sidebar. And it's a mechanism right here that I couldn't really find a horribly good picture of. But when all these are raised, this, this piece right here would slide into that slot, and that ball would f move itself, and the, the plug would be free to rotate if all the rest of the pins were set right. Does that make sense? And we actually have care of care of zero. We have a, uh, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, this is a uh, this is a Schlage Primus, um, and this actually has another security feature that I believe is next. Um, uh, one problem with this is this specific OSA V10 is that in a given region, all the OSA V10s will have the same sidebar cut. Um, so what that means later on for bumping is that you could purchase uh, a key locally and that would work on all, it would have the same sidebar as all the OSA locks locally. Uh, that's obviously a problem. Um, yeah, because uh, the sidebar would should be different so that you would have to get a specific sidebar for that key and a specific and, and then make the bump key for that lock. But it should be different from lock to lock. Hmm? Do they just ship them in a lot, like everything in Alabama? Uh, I don't personally know, but I think so, yeah. I don't know how far a given region is, but <laughs> that's how it goes. Uh, and also... They can't get their own keyway because then they'd be making their own locks. Their own sidebar. Um, I mean, maybe. The, everyone should have a different one that goes specifically with that because um, that makes sense, but I guess not. Uh, and also note the security pin usage and this little thing catches here as well. Uh, so it's a very, very hard lock to pick, uh, but not that hard to bump. And we'll get into that later. Uh, no, down. Uh, and this probably the coolest security feature is axial rotation. Uh, and normally in all our examples, the, the pins just need to be raised to the right place and then rotate, and then the key will rotate freely. Uh, these pins need to be rotated in the right way as well. So you're raising them and rotating them. And in this example, you can see how they're cut kind of strangely so that they'll fit onto the lock in the way that they're supposed to, or fit onto the key in the way that they're supposed to be rotated. And there's a better picture here. So um, when these, there's a little dimple right here. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but when all those are rotated correctly, the, the sidebar will f slide into that and be able to rotate. So it's, it's a, a more advanced sidebar. And it's very nice. Uh, Medico, I believe, originally came out with this. Don't hold me to that. Uh, but like I said, this, uh, this Slage Primus also has the same kind of technology, I think. Uh, like I said, not bona fide yet. So. Uh, and there's an example of a, a medical key. And you can see how they're all cut at angles. Uh, and so that works that when you insert that key, it'll rotate those all correctly. Um, very complex, requires uh, the key machine to cut that. But they, they are pickable. Uh, some people have figured out ways to kind of modify your normal pick set so that you can kind of get a, a grip on the, the pins and rotate them. Uh, they are pickable, but extremely hard to do. Um, and this is probably one of the, the best American-made locks that you can get. Uh, they come on pay phones, um, newspaper machines. Uh, so yeah. So uh, so far, what we've talked about have been pin tumbler locks. Uh, but there's, of course, different types of locks. Uh, we have uh, warded locks. And get right into that. So warded locks. Uh, outside, they look the same. But inside, they look differently. And they use, OK, I guess I didn't bring any of those. Um, I brought the key, though. So. Uh, they use a latch and spring instead of uh, pin stacks. Uh, and there's only one important latch. Uh, unlike the pin tumbler where you have to raise all the pin pairs, you only have to move one latch in this to open it. Uh, and all the other latches in there will just get in the way. Uh, so that if you put the wrong key in, it'll not be able to turn correctly. Uh, and they do have warded picks. And you can buy them or make them. And they're, they're very popular locks. Uh, you just, like visually, this will look the same as the master lock I just picked. Um, but the innards are much different. Uh, and that's a, a visual of how it looks inside. 
So when that red piece is, is uh, knocked out of the way, the bar will jump up. It's very simple, um, but <laughs> at present, it might be better than pin tumbler technology. And we'll get into that later. So, and then there's an example of warded picks. Uh, and actually, I'm sorry, uh, did I? These are pin tumbler picks. Um, and you could purchase these for 20 bucks while supplies last here. Uh, talk to M. And then, uh, of course, tubular locks. Uh, I'm sure you've all seen these on bike locks. Uh, very big on vending machines, that sort of thing. Um, and there, there's pin tumblers, essentially. They're just arranged in a circle, so they need a specialized key. Um, and they have tubular picks. Uh, ballpoint and pen casing works on really crappy tubular locks. If you have a bicycle lock, take the, uh, the ink portion out of your, your big pen put it in and uh, get it so that it grips on this piece right here. Try and rotate it, and a surprising number of bike locks suck. <laughs> but then I guess if you're, if you're riding a bike, then you can't afford really high security anyway. So. Uh, and here's an example of tubular picks. And these are manufactured, uh, expensive, but, but quite ingenious. Um, and I actually have one right here. Uh, and you can see that they're little nibs, and uh, the idea is that you take all of these and push it down like that so that they're all straight, and you tighten this, and I actually don't own a tubular lock, unfortunately. I tried to get one off a vending machine, but that was really heavy, and we couldn't get it through the door. Uh, so. Uh, so what you do is you, you insert this all the way into the lock and slowly rotate it, and the, the pressure of the pins pushing back will push these little, lat these little sliders up into the right position. So not only when you open it will you have picked it, you'll have a copy of how the pins are supposed to be set. <laughs> so if you have a tubular key machine, you can make a key for that. Uh, dimple locks, uh, AKA computer locks. And I don't know why people are so inclined to call them that, because they have nothing to do with computers. Um, but they're, <laughs> they're uber leak keys. They just look cooler. Uh, they're the same kind of pin tumbler technology. They're just arranged horizontally instead of vertically. Uh, the keyway, that is. And they're, they're very hard to pick with these picks I have here. Uh, and they're commonly found, like the, this queso is actually a very secure lock, um, in, in my opinion. I might be wrong, though. Uh, a lot of automobiles and uh, the, the, the bar deals that you fit on your steering wheel. Yeah. Uh, my dad had this case he brought back from his work. He didn't have. He, uh, he had the key for it, and the key looked like that. It had less dimples, it only had one line of them, but it also had a uh, key for a pin tumbler. Um, I don't think that's right. It was a weird key, but oh, they, they do make a lot of crazy keys, but I, I haven't seen anything like that personally. It might exist. In Europe, they definitely have them. Yeah. Yeah, well, well what happens is... Um, uh, that, that's not ex not always the same thing. They have uh, regular pin tumbler keys um, for like your master locks that'll have a, a, like a, a, a dimple in the side. And what that works to do is a, a ball bearing will slide into that. And if that's in the right spot, the, the key will be able to turn. So maybe that's what you saw. Uh, but I, I'm not sh eh. I'm not going to worry about it personally. <laughs> uh, so that's how dimple locks look. Uh, and like this, you could... Uh, it's easy to visualize how little room there is to pick things, um, but they do have dimple picks. Uh, extremely small, as you can see, um, but you could buy them online, and I'm told they're, they're fairly effective, um, but I haven't had the pleasure of being able to try one yet. So, uh, now the fun begins. Lock bumping. Uh, how many of you know what bumping is? Okay. <laughs> So all the people that know me, again. <laughs> um, all right, I want everybody to pull out their keys right now. Pull them out. Seriously, come on. I could already. All right, now look, look on your your keys and on the the head of the key, there should be an indentation, not not a number, but it should say KW1, SC1. Um, if you have either of those keys, raise your hand. 
So, <laughs> so everybody that could find their keys this morning before leaving the hotel, all right? Um, okay. Just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Uh, so lock bumping. We're going to get into how bumping works, uh, pick guns, making bump keys, uh, an advancement called a minimal movement method, and uh, how to defend against bumping, which very few locks are actually working on doing, uh, at least in the USA. Uh, Europe's a bit more informed about this. Uh, so the general response to bumping, uh, there have been a lot of interviews. Um, in most countries, they have uh, the, the, the local police or federal police, wh whatever, will put out a list of, like, these are secure locks. These are what you should buy because they've passed our approval ratings, and, you know, this is a five-star lock, so no one's going to be able to get in, and you're, you're perfectly safe. Uh, again, much like the, the cyber world, that never works. Um, and the general response has been that that's, that's not real. You're using rigged locks. Uh, it's very hard. Only professionals can do it. And you'll see I'm, I'm pretty much an idiot. So <laughs> as, we, as we move along, you won't have to worry about it too much. Uh, you need a lot of money, a lot of time. Uh, yesterday, I was making the lockbox with M. And uh, between like three and six, M was sitting there filing as many keys as he want. And he got all the locks that we bought open in a couple hours. Uh, and m there's only about five minutes of filing, and then three hours of, hey, that hole's too small. Oh, that hole's too big. Oh, come on, M. But uh, <laughs> that sort of stuff. And uh, you need, you know, every kind of key on the market for 100% efficiency. Um, keys must be made, you know, one hundredth of a million meter exact, you know. No one could get that precise because no one owns a key machine, right? Uh, and key Keys are very hard to obtain. Uh, this is true for some, but generally not. Uh, the idea is you just go buy a lock that has that key, and then you can modify it into a bump key. And uh, burglars need to know what lock it is before. Um, I can look at it. Um, I can <laughs> look at my key that I have. Say, say I, I know all my building has a key, but I don't have the master key. Uh, I'll know exactly what it is. Um, most keys now uh, that I've been kind of doing this for a while, I can just look at and just the, the key weight, I'll be able to tell. Um, it, it's, it's not as hard as it looks. It's, it's a general idea. Um, or even a lot of them have the, the name on the lock <laughs> and very few uh, key weights. So it wouldn't, you need maybe four or five at most for any particular brand. Uh, okay, so what exactly is bumping? Uh, bumping is taking a key that fits the lock, and that's, that's the key. So remember, all of you have those two locks, those two keyways, I should say. Um, and you modify the key in such a way that uh, it'll work in the, the Newton's cradle, cradle principle, but with the pins. Uh, and this is kind of how pick guns, which have been around for a long time, uh, work. And we have a, a demo of, does everybody know what Newton's cradle is? There's a picture of it right there. So when you pull one ball and let it go, only one ball from the other side will move because the energy is transferred between the middle ball. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Go see your physics teacher, and he'll, he'll just stare at that for hours, I swear. <laughs> uh, so here's an example. Uh, note that the, the three does not move. And you might think that this isn't uh, fully planned out, but I assure you, if you remember the colors of our pins, they'll relate directly to the colors of the pool balls. I know. I'm all color coordinated and shit. Um, so yeah. Uh, so keep that in mind. And this is how pick guns work, which have been around for a while. They'll hit all of those, and the force will be transferred up to the blue pin, and they'll jump. And when they're above that line, of course, the key will turn if you're putting torque on it. Make sense? All right. So I'm sure some of you are drawing conclusion as to how this works with keys. Uh, same idea. You, you, uh, and these are examples. Uh, and note that dimple locks, th this will work on any pin tumbler lock that isn't designed to prevent it, uh, which is very few at the moment. Uh, note that dimple locks aren't any different. Uh, they do require a dimple thing to cut them. Uh, of course, that's a little bit harder to come by, but still, that, that's not the point. If somebody really wants to get in, they'll get in if you're not using a good lock. Uh, there's also the, the Asa V10 right here our friend with the bad sidebar, and uh, some other European locks that you guys probably never heard of. <laughs> uh, so making a bump key. Of course, take a key that'll fit the lock. Um, so how many of you said you had the quick set or the sledge? Let's see. I got a quick set, and I have about eight sledge. Yeah. 
me just take them all off. So here's my quick set bump key. How many of your KW1 doors could I open? All of them? With a bit of luck? Um, mostly not luck, though. And what's that? Oh, sorry. And I actually see that. Yeah. Right. And then I have a Schlage key as well. Um, and somewhere I have a master. Uh, but you know, as you saw. Sometimes you don't even need a bump key for master locks. There it is. Yeah, and this is actually one we made yesterday. Um, and with the exception of the quick set key, all of these were filed by hand. Um, so you want to cut a 999 key, and in locksmithing terms, that would be the deepest pin depth. Um, some keys go to six the lowest, but uh, the general rule of thumb, as far as I've found, is that it's not the, the pins aren't going to ever be able to fall past the first ward, which is the cuts in the sides of the keys. Uh, so that's generally where the bottoms of all these pins are. Um, so all you need is a key that'll fit the lock. You cut it down so that all the, the pin where the pins would lay would be at uh, quote unquote 999. Uh, and you could use key gauges for this, which we'll get into in a second. Uh, and you could see in, in the visual of how, how the locks mo or the keys modified, sorry. And you could do this with a hand file, a uh, Dremel. Or a professional key cutter would be the most precise thing to do it with. Uh, I've got a question. Sure. Uh, with a bump key, is it important to have it to, um, have the tape, or can it just be horizontal, like flat? Um, well, when you when you get a factory-made 999 key, uh, they have it can't be flat, uh, and you'll see why in a second. Um, but they definitely do need those. Uh, you shouldn't make them very prominent, or else the key will get stuck in the lock, which we can attest to yesterday. <laughs> Um, but uh, they, they definitely do need it, and you'll, you'll see why in a second, I promise. And uh, if it, again, key cutter, something I desperately need. Uh, so like I said, key gauges, uh, and these have different sets of keys, and you all you have to do is take your, take your key and see, find quick set, quick set, and just put it in. Oh, look, it goes all the way to the bottom. Uh, and these could be used, they sell them online very cheap. Uh, this one, I believe, is 8 bucks, And it has uh, quick set, slage, master lock, wiser, and west lock. And I'm sure everybody in the room has one of those, one of those locks, either at work or at home, in one way or another. And so key bumping. So now that we've created the key, uh, what do we do? Let's see. What we want to do is um, take the key, uh, and keep in mind this is the quote unquote old school method, um, but it does work. Uh, you want to take the key and pull it out one pin depth, uh, and that, that might seem kind of hard to, to fathom, but it's very easy. Uh, you'll feel it click, and the, the force of the springs will keep your key in place. So. so you do that, take it out one, and hit it. Boom. And right there you could turn it. Does that make sense? Very simple, again. But only professionals and people who have spent years of their life training in a temple <laughs> can do this. So, uh, and uh, like I said, hit it with something. Um, you could hit it with anything you like, but they have developed special tools to do this. To do this. And um, here in, in the uh, picture we have the KE bump, and I actually have one today. Uh, and it's it's just a uh, a little thing with a kind of a bit of a bit of spring to it and a hard plastic on the top and a little handle. This one I busted though, so this is this is a good one. <laughs> um, and the reason I busted this is uh, when when you just uh, kind of go like this without it hitting any, anything, all the force is um, exerted on the handle, and the handle is not specifically designed to take that kind of kind of damage. Uh, so don't do that. Only hit it against something. Something to keep in mind. Uh, not very hard. Uh, it depends on the, the spring pressure, uh, but not very hard. Uh, 
see. So that's KE bump. Uh, there's also the Tomahawk, but that, that is not for sale. Uh, the KE bump is being manufactured and distributed to anybody who has it or wants money. And we actually threw out some, some of M's bumping hammers, limited edition for layer one, of course. Um, we threw some of those out to well, the couple lucky people that got them. Oh, stay there. Uh, demonstration. Gasp. My physical security. And, okay. I have quite a few, and I think I could bump everything. Most of the stuff on this table. Um, I'm going. Uh, so here is our little cutaway. Uh, and this is actually a, um, I believe, an American, an American keyway. Uh, so you have it. Uh, well, uh, come up here. Well, pull up a chair. <laughs> no, sorry. I'm, I'm the Lone Ranger here. You're going to be my volunteer for the rest of this. Oh, right. <laughs> hey, wait, have you ever bumped a lock? Never. Okay, good. Data? Nice to meet you, Alex. This is, uh, this is Alex. Uh, so I need you to verify that that's not the correct key for this. Because that would be cheating, of course. Who would right. do that? <laughs> yeah, that's definitely not the correct key. Try and turn it. No? No. Okay. It's been verified. Does everyone agree? Okay. So we have it. Insert. Oh, there we go. Okay, I'm not using the dot at all. All right, there. Uh, pull it out one. And uh, take our bumping hammer. Uh, I suck at this today. Open. A brand, a brand you're more familiar with, Slage. Uh, verify that that doesn't work. Uh -huh. Let me. It's my Slage key. And a standard Slage doorknob that you'd go and buy wherever. Oh. Good. All right. So take it. Pull it out. And I actually have a lot more bump food this one, and I'm going to feel like a real dick if I don't get it in the first one. Open. <laughs> Uh, and like I said, I also have a master lock and a quick set, but uh, hopefully Slage is enough to worry you. And you're here not only to have fun uh, turning locks for me, but to try and bump one yourself. So sh should I verify it? I'll verify sure, it. you verify it. <laughs> I can't have this guy right. cheating. <laughs> ah, all right. So it's in the lock. And pull it out one. Feel it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Put your finger kind of at the edge. You need to put very slight pressure so that when so they we'll jump, turn. it'll turn. Exactly. Got it. Just very slight. Hit it again. You should I think it turned. Yeah, yeah it did. there. <laughs> <laughs> you want to try this one? Yeah, sure. This, one's okay. sure. Um, this one's a little trickier. You have to touch it right as you hit it. Okay. Okay? I'll pull it out one for you because I, I feel we're close like that. All right. <laughs> I think I'm going to go freak out my neighbors now. There. <laughs> Pretty simple, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you worried? No, not at you all. You're going to get rid of all your quick sets? <laughs> so I'm hoping everybody believes me. Because I, I wanted to do that, and that worked better than when I bumped them. So. <laughs> that was pretty easy. Um, let me try this one. Oh, I'll keep going, but you you could play with all my toys. Sweet. <laughs> you want to try that? Hey, okay. So while he's enjoying uh, busting up master locks, uh, we'll move on to bumping tracks. Uh, one problem, uh, deformations can occur. Uh, when you hit the key in, the shoulder will uh, so very lightly ricochet against the, the top part of the lock. Uh, and you can see a picture of that here. And if you talk to me after, I can show you some of my locks that uh, people here have beat the hell out of. So they're like, why won't it open? <laughs> um, some people just don't have the bump foo, apparently. Um, and uh, so they have a solution to this. Uh, the glue gun shoulder uh, and the shoulder on the key is uh, this piece right here. Uh, that, that's the thing that actually stops it from going into the lock farther so that all the, uh, the cuts are lined up correctly with the pins. 
Um, so what they do is you take off the shoulder and put a glue gun shoulder there. Uh, and this won't hurt the lock, because uh, does everybody know what a glue gun is? <laughs> no? Uh, it's, it's a device that has, um, it, 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 look, it looks like a gun. <laughs> and you, and you, they, have a, they have hard glue sticks, and you push them through the back, and there's a heating thing in there so that when you push them through, it, it'll melt them and come out as glue on the other end. It's, it's ingenious. <laughs> the guy who made it's a millionaire. Uh, it's all right. I don't expect most of you to uh, to know because you're yeah because you're not because you're not old ladies making sweaters and whatnot. So. <laughs> um, so it's it's very simple. Uh, I'm sure you can all fathom how to heat the halves together and stick them on the key, um, and then bump, and that will break after bumping it enough. But uh, glue sticks are cheap as hell. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> Did you get it? No. Try picking it. Do, are you all familiar with the picking methods now? Uh, you could use whichever one you want. We'll find out, won't we? All right. Ah, so uh, they Im actually improved on the bumping method. Um, the pull-out method, <laughs> surprisingly <laughs> enough, <laughs> not so effective. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> thought? Um, so what they did is they, they made a minimal movement uh, method. And what they do is this is how it would look if you pushed it all the way in. When you hit this, nothing would happen because it wouldn't be able to move. Uh, oops. So you take you, the highlighted points, you saw them off. I like how there's no picture there for no reason. <laughs> now I'm sad. Oh. oh. That's cool. The flag in the state of Alabama? What? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> That was my bad. I ruined it now. All right, go home. No. <laughs> what the hell? Now they're there. Okay, maybe not. I lied. Um, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> <laughs> or don't start the slideshow. <laughs> um, so uh, the idea is you file off, you file off uh, the tip and the shoulder, very small amounts, and uh, instead when you put this into the lock, it'll have, uh, the springs will kind of push it out because you could push it farther in because now the shoulder's not stopping you. Uh, but when you let go, this, the spring pressure is going to push it back out to where it should be uh, so that all the pins are aligned correctly. Um, so the minimal movement method, uh, you don't have to pull it out. And I believe this one actually works. Uh, I have too many quick set bump keys, by the way. And uh, our good friend Zach tested this thoroughly at the last 2600 here in LA. So doesn't turn. Uh, yeah. Well, look harder. <laughs> um, it's going to be kind of hard to see this, but I could push it in, and it'll push itself back out. Is that visible? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's quote unquote how you know you did it right. Uh, and then, just like normal, put the torque here. Open. And I don't know how many other. Get the fuck out of the lock. Uh, I don't know. Let me try with the master lock. Big one? No, where'd you put that key? Seriously, man, come on. Ah. We're running a show. There it is. There you go. I actually think this might be the wrong key for this. <laughs> it fits, though. Uh, oh shit, let me try this. That won't fit. Oh, this one will definitely work because this is a modified key that actually worked for it. I won't. Sure. Are you hitting it multiple times? Nice because you're you're um, attacking each your uh, pin, the, the sticking pin. Uh, no, that's um, because in the minimal movement method, it'll push itself back out. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes, like I, like how I told them to hit it again, sometimes they'll they'll all open, but it won't rotate enough because you're putting very light torque on it. Uh. So, but you you can hit it generally as much as you want. <laughs> That's why people like the minimal movement method more because they can beat the shit out of my locks.
Oh, you so wanted to open. <laughs> ah. Oh, it might help if this key wasn't broken right there. <laughs> yeah. All right, scratch that. Uh, but that that that, that that lock sucked anyways. <laughs> I didn't need to bump it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Um, should bumping scare you? What do you think? Yes. No. I think that one is hopefully a no-brainer, but we'll go over it. Yes, uh, inexpensive. We, we bought uh, all these keys can be bought with $10 deadbolts. Uh, quick set keys are very cheap. Quick set sucks anyways, but, you know, I, I like knowing that I can break them all. Uh, inexpensive, inconspicuous, uh, as fast as this is, how hard would it be just to walk up to the lock, boom, in? Not very hard, hopefully. <laughs> Uh, but I, I will laugh if one of you gets arrested because you're pounding on the damn thing. And, uh, <laughs> uh, very easy, as our, our good friend Alex. Alex, Alex helped us out with. Uh, he's never done this before. Is this your first time learning first about time. lock picking? First time. Oh, he's a, a virgin. But now <laughs> we we busted his lock cherry <laughs> with two, with two. With the collar. <laughs> I've been taken advantage of. <laughs> yes. Um, and in the USA, very few locks offer protection. The slage is a standard doorknob that you'd find. Uh, oh, and, and one thing to point out, security pins don't matter. Uh, because you're bumping them all, and they're jumping before they're getting turned, they're not going to catch. Unless you're putting excessive torque on it, in which case you shouldn't do anyways. Um, but yeah, because most slage doorknobs will come with security pins. Um, but that doesn't matter. Uh, our lock box that we made back here that's going to be put up after the talk, um, I have, we rearranged all the security pins in all of them. We could bump them all. Um, so it's, it's not a big deal. Uh, but that's for picking, not for bumping. But you could bump it if you feel so inclined. Just don't get anything stuck or it'll have to hurt you. Or have my good friend Alex here hurt you. <laughs> uh, and there's also insurance problems. Um, if I break into Strom's apartment, which, which is, you know, one of these keys may work on, I mean. Um, and I just open, it looks to the insurance company as if you left your door open, you left your door unlocked. How are they going to know, unless you like blatantly, like, so when I do break into apartments, I make sure to throw bricks through the windows. <laughs> um, just, just to make sure everybody can, uh, can, can be happy. Um, so that's a major problem, especially for businesses. Um, like I, I was telling people yesterday, every lock on this block and probably most of this city is a slage doorknob. How many doors do you think I could open with this key? Asterisk. Most of them. Well, yeah, asterisk. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, big problem, uh, especially for businesses. For your home, you might not have anything important. I mean, I, I'd die if all these locks were gone the next day. Um, but it, it's a very big problem for businesses, especially. So yes, bumping should scare you. And why is nothing being done? Well, it can be done. Um, <laughs> through the use of sidebars. Like we talked about the Asa V10. Uh, that's a good idea, but not if you screw it up. Because uh, now all we need to do is find a, a key that has the right sidebar for the region, and you cut the top pins to be a bump key, and when you insert it, the sidebar will work as designed. You don't even have to manipulate it. Um, so that's bad. But the, the Medeco locks are all much better at the sidebar, especially with the bioxial rotation. Um, and then there's a thing called trap pins. Why are my pictures not working? Oh. No. Oh, seriously, I keep doing that. Uh, but all these are gone? That sucks. All right, you don't get a link. Watch this. It's going to be uber late. <laughs> oh, registration. It should be noted that this is not my, my, my real OS. I just couldn't find anything else. To, all right. Oh, oh, no. We're going back. We're going back. <laughs> all right. So you can see the uh, demonstration of it pushing up and then pushing back. And then, oh, pwned. <laughs> uh, so we went over sidebars, trap pins, and that's a fierce looking lock, ain't it? Uh, so the idea is when you have the key, that's what happens. 
Uh, and this happens because, uh, as you asked earlier, Hikari, uh, the key holds that top pin in place. So that when it passes by that, that pin isn't going to fall back into there. Uh, and when you bump it, that, pl that piece stays in place. And yeah, uh, what, what's the problem with this? Yeah, you have to drill this lock out now. There's no way to get that out unless you drill it. Uh, and people have tried crazy amounts of, of old school lock, locksmithing techniques. Um, you have to drill the pin out if that trap pin catches. Or you have to drill the lock out, excuse me. Uh, and that's obviously not what we're going to do every time we bump a lock. Um, so a very elegant way of doing it is shadow drilling. Uh, and normally all the chambers are drilled to the, the, the same, where is my mouse? Depth here. Uh, they're all like that. Uh, and shadow drilling is when you do something like this. See that uh, the fourth one's a bit higher? Uh, so what will happen is that your bump key uh, is at the lowest pin depths, uh, but that pin will rest slightly higher. So when you bump it, it's not going to get touched. Uh, very easy thing to do, very elegant. Um, it also is a very small way of defending against picking, um, but very easy, but no one, very, I think only Kaba is doing it, as far as I know. Uh, and that's a European company that you never heard of. Yeah. Uh, bumping specifically, uh, but um, assume that it, in some situations it, it uh, helps. Like in this fourth pin, if we go in with a pick, to push that one up, we'd have to hit the third pin, and that might push it over the shear line, uh, the, the bottom pin over the shear line, so you can't. Does that make sense? Yeah, but de uh, mainly a defense against bumping. Uh, legal issues, don't be a criminal. You'll end up like me. Yeah. <laughs> kidding, kidding. Uh, purchasing, uh, from state to state, it differs of the legality of owning either lock picking equipment or bumping equipment. Uh, generally, you, anywhere you're eligible if you're uh, a lock manufacturer, such as uh, um, Medeco or Osh or whatever. Uh, you're in law enforcement. Uh, you're an automobile dealer because they have a very supposedly tight programs on the release of locks and keys and that sort of stuff for it. Um, repossession, uh, if you're a repo dude. Uh, or if you're a certified locksmith, uh, and uh, with the advent of the internet, if you're a bum like me, you could get lockpicks too. Uh, and possession, uh, generally they're legal uh, right here. These are mostly all my locks, some donated by the city of Pasadena. Um, <laughs> uh, but, but generally the rule is you're not going to get in trouble unless you show intent. Uh, right here, it's fine. I might have to call the cops on you for opening uh, my locks. No problem. Um, but it, if we were to go and try and open locks uh, down the block, that'd be a little bad, because uh, then you do look like a criminal. <coughs> so uh, just be logical. Don't be an idiot, and you won't get arrested. <coughs> and like I said, bring a brick when you break into houses. So. <laughs> kidding, kidding. Uh, so what are good locks? What are affordable good locks that you could buy? Um, there's a lot more than this that are very, very good locks. Uh, but these, in my opinion, are the most cost-effective. Uh, the Medeco bioxial pin, uh, locks, like we showed earlier, very good, very good. Um, Medeco's a solid company. Uh, like I said, they make payphone stuff, uh, newspaper stuff. Um, they're really one of the best, if not the best, American lock, lock company. Uh, best, which I have an example. Uh, I have an example up here. It's a, a very good lock. This is the lock that was in the restrictive keyway thing. Uh, it has other security measures that kind of are beyond the scope of this, um, but that's another very good company. Uh, banks use that for their doors, a lot of train stations. Um, they're, they're a very good lock company. Uh, and the Asa V10, despite its handicap, is still a, a very extremely hard to pick lock. Um, so I guess if you're not worried about bumping, uh, then you should be okay. Uh, Avis, uh, American. Uh, Sergeant and Greenleaf. Uh, excuse me. Uh, the Slage Primus that I, shlo that I, uh, that I showed, a uh, very good lock. Uh, and Abloy also makes wafer and disc locks that are very cool. On a lot of um, also newspaper machines, you'll see uh, a keyhole that looks like a crescent. Uh, those are Abloy disc locks. How are those picked, if at all? Uh, they have specialized tools for that. Uh, but I, that's kind of beyond the scope of this, so. Um, but if you go, if you check out Tool's website, which we'll get a link to later, uh, one of the guys there does a lot of research on it. Has really cool PDFs of cutaways, like very nice, uh, high quality stuff. Uh, and bad locks, uh, Master Lock Quick Set, 
Enough said, right? <laughs> the fact that you all have a quick set lock here, probably for your door. Uh, very bad. Master locks just suck for padlocks. Um, so yeah. Uh, so buying picks and tools. Layer one is officially sponsored by LockPickShop.com. Uh, and they're great for picks, pick sets. Uh, I got my gauges from them, my tubular pick, my cutaway cylinder. Um, they also sell other miscellaneous tools that are kind of beyond this, but you check it out. They have a lot of cool stuff. Uh, and if you use the code LP101 when you buy, you'll get 11% uh, off. So check that out. Did I click that? I think I might have. Oh, well. Uh, and also check out lockpicks.com. Um, Lockpick shop is awesome, but they, they're lacking a lot of stuff, such as key blanks, uh, which brings us back to how hard is it to get keys to make bump keys? Not hard. eBay, this kind of stuff. Hardware store. Exactly. Uh, we, we, we've actually gone into a hardware store and had them duplicate a bump key because they don't know any better. Um, um, and also you can buy key cutters on Lockpick shop uh, and a lot of other kind of tools that you might be interested in. Uh, and here's a, a big long list of links, uh, which you could just download later. Uh, but, and the, I'm not completely sure if the KE bump site is up, uh, but it will be shortly, I'm told, because uh, this is just kind of coming out on the market. Uh, so thanks. Uh, Deviant Olam made all the animations. Uh, the guy who I viciously stole the picking illustration on the front, uh, the, the guy who took the dimple pick image, and of course, Lockpick Shop and KE Bump for uh, sponsoring me. Uh, and questions? No thanks for me. True. What about keys and um, Those are more complicated. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> um, well, they wouldn't. So I'm assuming the RFID is like a, it authenticates after the lock's opened. Um, um, well, the more common. Yeah, uh, I can picture them being that dumb. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> you uh, start with the one with the right. Yeah, so yeah, C kind of like the ASA thing, but with an RFID instead of a sidebar, I guess. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. Two questions, maybe one off topic. I am seeing for sale shim type picks for uh, padlocks. I don't know if you know if those are any. Yeah, yeah. Or if they, if they work. Uh, uh, against crappy locks, yes. Against uh, double ball locking or stuff that looks like this, probably not. Yeah. Um, pretty much all the stuff that your shim is going to work against are probably easily picked. Because okay. uh, that's kind of a, a more outdated kind of lock picking method. It does work against a surprising number of locks. Um, but I'd say learn to pick or yeah. cut a bump key would be much easier. Anything else? No? Nobody wants to know my sign? <laughs> I can't tell you. This is the hacker con. <laughs> um, is that it? Okay.